Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this machine learning and large language model tutorial, we explain how to correctly install Gemma 2 family of models in Python and Windows on a local computer. But before I start with the detailed explanation, I need to mention the following. Gemma is very attractive mainly because it's a small model and you can run it on your laptop and your desktop computer with limited memory and you can even use your CPU to run the model. Here is the Python script that runs Gemma. Over here we can ask a question. For example, over here I ask how to solve a quadratic equation. And currently I'm running Gemma on my GPU NVIDIA 3090 with 24 gigabyte of RAM. However, we can also run it on CPU and I will test it. So let's run it and let's see how it works in practice. Now you will see real time demonstration. Okay, so let's see what's happening over here and how long will it take. You see the model is loaded literally in one second or two seconds. And now let's see what happens okay maybe 10 seconds already and let's see okay we are still waiting here for the answer and the answer should come so literally in 15 seconds you will get the answer and here it is a quadratic equation is an equation of this form this sounds good and then they explain how to factor then they explain quadratic formula, this is all good, and completing the squares. Okay, you can also improve this answer by increasing this number of new tokens over here. And that's it. Simple as that. You can see that the Python script is no more than 20 lines of code. Okay, let's start with explanations. Gemma is a collection of lightweight large language models or LLMs developed by Google. It is based on the identical research technology as the technology used to create Gemini models. The main advantages of Gemma models are the following. The models and weights are open source and models are relatively small. Due to the fact that the models are small, they can be deployed and used on, used on computers with limited resources such as laptops and desktops. Finally, it is very simple to write a Python script that will use Gemma 2. In this tutorial, we will test Gemma 2 model with around 2.6 billion parameters. There are also larger Gemma 2 models available on the Hugging Face website. Before you start with implementing, downloading and installing, it's very important to know what are the software and hardware prerequisites. First of all, I will explain the following. I tested the Gemma 2 on my personal computer. It's a two-year-old desktop computer running Windows 10 with 48 gigabyte RAM. And I have NVIDIA 3090. And the most important specification is that I have 24 gigabyte of RAM. However, most likely you can run Gemma 2 on computers with lower specs. That is, you don't probably don't need such a powerful GPU and you can even probably run Gemma on your laptop. I didn't test it, but this is what they claim. Now, in order to properly run PyTorch and you will need PyTorch to run Gemma 2 in the Python virtual environment, you need to install the Microsoft Visual Studio compilers. If you do not do that, then you might get different DLL errors when importing PyTorch. Consequently, you need to go to this website over here. Here it is. And over here, you need to download Visual Studio Community Edition. It's completely free and you can install it. And after that, you will solve a big problem with compilers. Okay, then. On my computer, I have NVIDIA CUDA toolkit and compilers installed everywhere. I didn't test installation of Gemma 2 without the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. Just in case, install NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. Anyway, if you, even if you don't use it in this tutorial, you will need it for some other machine learning libraries. And it's very important to have it on your system. Consequently, go to this website over here and spend some time to install CUDA Toolkit. It will pay you off in the long run. Okay, 
So let's continue. I created actually a tutorial on how to properly install NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit in Windows. A link to that tutorial is given in the description below and can also be found by searching for videos on my channel. Then you have to make sure that proper environment variables are properly set. To find out that, click here and search for system environment. Over here click on environment variables and you should see first of all CUDA home over here then you should see these two paths. This means that CUDA is properly installed on your system and you can continue. Then you will need to have around 5 to 12 gigabyte of free space on your local disk in order to run get Gemma 2 on the local computer. You will need this space to download all the files. Then you will need to install Git for downloading remote files and repositories. We will need Git to download the files from the Hugging Face website. To download Git, you simply go to this website, that is to the official Git website and download for Windows. Download, wait and you can use it from command line. In addition to Git, we will also need an extension of Git for large files. Consequently, you need to go to this website over here or simply Google git LFS and how to install it in Windows and you will be guided to this web page. How to install git LFS go to this website here it is then download for Windows and install it but make sure that you first install git and that's it. This is a very important step so make sure that you install both Git and Git large file storage. To obtain access to Gemma, you need to go to the Hugging Face website and over here you need to type Gemma 22BIT and here it is. Then what you need to do next, you need to acknowledge the license, you need to click here and you need to authorize. And over here you need to write your credentials. That is, you need to write your first name, last name, and some other details. Then you need to go over the license, and over here you need to click accept, and do you want to receive model updates, promotion, useful tips, and news about Google AI, I will not select this, and I will click on accept. Okay, and now we have access to Gemma. After you accept the terms and conditions, you will be able to see the models. And over here are all the files. Our next step is to download all of these files. To download these files, you actually have to do two things. So first of all, you need to create the so-called access token. How to do that? Well, you need to click over here, then click on settings, then over here, click on access tokens. So click here and click on create new token. So give a name to your token, I will call it token3 in my case, and then here it's very important to select this option. This will enable you to download all the files by using this token on your local computer. If you don't press over here, you will have issues. And now you just need to click on create token and a token will be created. However, over here, you will see a window with a token and the token consists of series of letters and numbers. I'm not going to show you my token since it's confidential. However, in your case, the token will be generated, copy and paste it and save it somewhere and do not show it to someone else. You will need this token to log in remotely to this repository and to download everything. Okay, let's start with the installation process. First of all, let's open a command prompt. Click on start and search for command prompt. Open command prompt and over here I will simply resize my command prompt such that you can see what I'm typing and at the same time you can follow this manual. First of all, let's go to the C drive by executing this command and in the C drive we will create a new folder called codes. I already have this folder so I will not execute this command. You should execute this command. Instead, what I will do and what you should do after you create codes is to navigate to codes. Good. Then inside of the codes we will create another subfolder 
called Gemma 22B and this will be the base folder for our installation. So let's do it like this and let's navigate to this folder. Good, it's completely empty. The next step is to download the model from the remote repository. But before you do that, it's very important to run this git lfs install. This will actually initialize git large file storage such that you can download large files from remote repository. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, make sure that git lfs is installed. Okay, the next step is to actually clone or better to say download our remote repository. To do that, we actually need to execute this command. Over here, instead of this username in these angle brackets, you should type your username. How to find the username? Well, go to the Hugging Face website, click here. Your username is this username, or you can also see it over here. These are your usernames. They are identical. Okay, good. Let's now go back and let's continue. Over here, I will immediately type my username. You can safely erase these angle brackets and you should write your username. Then, over here, erase these angle brackets and write your token or copy and paste your token. It should look somehow like this. Of course, I'm not going to show you my token since it's private. However, simply copy and paste your token. Then, after that, you need to specify the address. The address is at then the name of the website is standard and over here you need to enter the path or the ID of your model. How to find the ID of your model? Well, search here for the model you obtain access to. I obtain the access to this model. I'll simply copy this thing, then go over here and simply paste it. Oops, here. And it should look somehow like this. And this is what you should execute. So copy this command, go here and execute this command and the download process will start. After several minutes, the process will be completed and if you type this command, you should see your repository folder. So let's navigate to this repository folder and let's see all the files. And the most important file is actually this model file as well as this model file. Of course, there are also other configuration files. You can also see them over here. If you go to code Gemma 22B and here's the folder, let's see the size of the folder. You can see that the folder is around 10 GB. And this is mainly because we have this Git folder over here that's also huge. And this Git folder stores like previous revisions and other stuff. So for this tutorial to free some space, I can safely erase this folder. However, I can just leave it as it is. And if you have space, leave it as it is because you might want to, for example, do some revisions or do something. So it's very nice to have Git initialized. However, keep in mind that you actually don't need it for this particular tutorial. Okay, so let's see what's the next step. Once you install everything, you need to create a virtual environment. So make sure that you're in this folder and let's create a virtual environment. To create a virtual environment, you need to execute this command. So let me paste now, or let me just write it down like this. I will call my virtual environment as Jam. Good. Now, after you create the virtual environment, you need to activate the virtual environment. We activate the virtual en environment by typing this. That is, we need to execute a file from the subfolder called Gemma inside of the script subfolders and the name of the file is activate.bat. This is a simple script that will activate the environment and here you will see that the environment is activated. Now here comes a very important step. You need to install all the necessary packages. I recommend to everyone before you start installing packages to do this, to run this command, and this command will clear the pip or pipe cache. That is, it will clear all the previous versions of packages stored on your system. And this is very, very important to have a clean installation. And after that, just type this to make sure that everything is purged such that you don't have some 
additional issues. Okay, good. First of all, let's type pip list to see that everything is empty and you can see that you only have pip in your virtual environment, which is very good. Then let's install setup tools. They are necessary to download things. This is the first thing we will need. And the next step is also very important. And in this step, you need to install PyTorch. And I will show you what's the correct procedure. So go over here, go to the, this website. And over here on this website, that is on the official PyTorch website, you need to click the proper options. Click on Stable, click on Windows, click on PIP, click on Python. And over here, I tested for CUDA 11.8 and it works. You might have, I had issues with CUDA 12.4, so I will not use CUDA 12.4. However, you can also try different options. Okay, so let's go here and let's copy and paste the command and let's run it. Now, this will take around probably two, three minutes, as you can see over here, the progress to install. You can see that PyTorch is around three gigabyte. So be patient over here and wait until everything is installed. The next step is to install transformers. Transformers are very important since they will enable us to easily run Gemma. So click here and install transformers. And finally, we need to install Accelerate. So let's install Accelerate by like running this and good. Finally, we are ready to start coding. To start coding, we need to start Visual Studio Code. To write my Python script, I will use Visual Studio Code and I will start Visual Studio Code like this. However, if you have some other Python editor, you can also use it. And over here, I'm going to write a new file by clicking File, New File, and I'm going to call it testgemma.py. And I will save it in this folder and I will create a file. And over here, in the interest of time, I will simply copy and paste the script I wrote. Okay, first step is to actually install, or better to say, to import PyTorch. We do it like this. Then, from Transformers, we import Pipeline. Pipeline will enable us to define our model as well as its, as its parameters, and you will see it later on. And over here, we need to set the model absolute path. So what is the model absolute path? Go to command prompt and you should be in this folder, right? Where all the model files are. So the path is given over here. So simply copy this part, then go over here and you need to do several modifications. To write the Python path, you need to do this, okay? Then what you do need to do next, you need to copy this and you need to simply paste this. And this is enough for Windows, or better to say for Python, to know where the model is. This is a very important step. So do not just blindly write my script, make sure that this model path is correct. Next, we define pipe. To define pipe, we need to use a pipeline function that we just imported. imported. We specify text generation, we specify over here model path and we specify some additional arguments over here we are using float 16 as a data format and over here we are using as device CUDA this means that we will use basically our GPU you can change over here for example CPU or if you are on a Mac computer you can type MPS and over here you can ask a question how to make an orange juice however I'm going to change this and I will ask, for example, this question, what is a quadratic equation and how to solve it, for example. Then over here, you need to define messages. You need to specify your role, you're the user, and you need to specify your message or the question, and here it is. This is a simple dictionary, and this is how you use it. And then you just simply call pipe, you specify messages and you specify an additional parameter such as the max number of tokens that is over here I'm going to increase this to increase the length of my response for example 512 you can also choose a larger number and over here you will retrieve 
the response by extracting the correct things. And then finally you will print the response and that's it. Simple as that. Save this. Then the next step is to run this in Visual Studio Code. To run this in Visual Studio Code, press Control Shift P and search for Python Select Interpreter here. Click here and make sure that your virtual environment is active. Select your virtual environment. Click heal and model will run. Ignore this initial error since this comes from my Visual Studio code. And you can see the model is being loaded. And over here you can see some simple warning. You can simply ignore it. This tells you that PyTorch was not compiled with flash attention and flash attention can actually speed up the inference process and you just need to wait over here let's monitor the resources you can see your GPU that is my GPU is being used and here is the res response okay so we can see what is a quadratic equation and then a quadratic equation is a polynomial equation of the second degree and you can see the procedure for solving the quadratic equation beautiful very nice good Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.